Hey guys, today I'm back with another video and I wanted to show uh, another feature of hair particle systems in Blender on how to create uh, various interesting hairstyles. And uh, this particular feature is the roughness feature uh, or um, setting. And um, what you're looking at is a um, excerpt of my uh, article on um, hair particle systems in Blender and um, I've written about this but today I want to show you in the video in video format how this um, this works so let's hop into blender right here and um, let's take a look so here I have a, uh, a hairstyle that I created today and uh, it's it's kind of an anime looking hairdo well, mainly because I was trying something else and that was so difficult so I just went with this um, and uh, I'm gonna show you how to how to use the roughness with this example now uh, the first thing you should know is that to, to, to access the roughness setting you have to uh, go to your particle setting properties and then make sure you select the correct particle system if you have multiple if there's just one just select that one it'll be selected by default go to the children setting and at the bottom here you have roughness as a drop down just open that and as you can see the roughness has a couple of different settings um, the first thing you see is this little checkbox that says use roughness curve I'm gonna get back to that at the end of the video um, before before that I'd like to explain how other stuff works and then the rest of it you can see is actually divided into three small sections. The first two are the uniform and size sliders. And then there's endpoint and shape sliders. And then there's random size and threshold sliders. So let me explain how these work. Before I do, I want to point out one thing. Uh, as you can see, this hairstyle is pretty dense. Uh, if, uh, if you go to the children, you can see in the display amount I have displaying. I'm displaying 80 children. Um, per parent that's a lot I'm gonna bring this down to five and you can immediately see the hair really recede quite a bit and uh, this makes it a lot more performant to move the sliders about um, so I can show you in real time what's happening I'm also uh, increasing the strand steps I have a video explaining what strand steps are the resolution of hair so in, in viewport display you can see here uh, I, have, I have increased strand steps to eight. Uh, you could, I could probably get away with five, but uh, I really want to show you the effect in detail. So, um, keeping at eight. Um, so, if you're trying, if you're following along, you might want to set that at eight. And now we can move on to the settings. Okay. Um, the first setting you need to see or you need to understand is this uniform and size settings. Both of these settings work in tandem okay you can't um, you can't ignore one or the other so let's take a look if I were as you can see here size is set at, at 1 by default and roughness is set at 0 by default if I was to increase this slider of uniform you'll see something happening as I gradually increase this but it doesn't really create the rough effect that you see you know, you, might, you may have been attracted to on the uh, thumbnail okay it's not really what we're going for it does create a lot of variation which could be useful for certain hairstyles but it's not really what we're looking for and the reason for this is because it is working it's just that the roughness um, frequency or size is too high so we need to we need to um, make it a lot smaller so we can see it on a per strand basis so let me bring this size down and just take a look at what happens when I bring the size down. As I bring it down, you can start to see the hair is really roughing up. Okay, if I were to reduce the amplitude or oh, the uniformity or uniform setting, you can really see now. Now we have something um, more similar to uh, the rough effect that you're looking for okay um great so what exactly happened here uh well the size if you take a look at this at a single strand if you can just try to focus on a single strand which is a little difficult we'll try our best 
okay and I change the size you can start to see that the size of the roughness or you could even call it the frequency of the roughness starts to uh, reduce and as I reduce reduce this size value the frequency of the roughness starts to increase and, and you can go only as low as 0 0.01 that's the lowest setting um, or you can keep increasing it to whatever number you want I think the highest uh, highest is probably something like 10 or something like that okay so it, it works it's just that the hair is following a certain frequency so this is the lowest and you might want something around this area okay now the uniform value controls the amplitude of this um, effect or the uh, magnitude of the roughness if I were to increase this you can see that each strand is getting worse and worse you know more rough uh, and more uh, violently rough okay and I can just go crazy with this and it'll just look absurd okay so let's bring this back down okay um, and and that's what these two settings do okay so that's pretty much how you control roughness now why wh what are all these other settings before I talk to you about endpoint and shape I want to discuss random size and threshold because that's kind of the same thing as uniform the only difference is that it's random versus uniform so wh wh what what uniform means is that when I'm increasing the roughness I'm actually increasing it in a very uniform way so all the child hairs of a specific parent are gonna uniformly increase in roughness okay and that's great if that's what you want but sometimes that's not what you want you want something a little bit more random and you want a little bit more control over randomness so let's bring this uniform down okay and just for argument's sake I'm just gonna use this size in the random size because random size and threshold is very similar to uniform is random is exactly like uniform it controls the amount of roughness and size controls the frequency of roughness so let's bring that up and you can see here by increasing random I have effectively achieved the exact same result as uniform if I were to copy this and make this zero and put this into uniform it would be uh, well one one thing though is that random seems to have a much higher effect than uh, uniform so if I were to bring this down you can see here it's much more roughness so you might need to you know either reduce the amplitude or reduce the frequency to have a lesser effect okay there you go um, now um, with random we, we have the benefit of um, controlling something called a threshold now with the threshold we can actually decide how many hairs by percentage is um, going to be randomly rough check this out now if I put it all the way to one it's like nothing is rough randomly rough but if I were to put it to zero everything is rough and if it's somewhere in the middle 0.5 like it's a half of them are randomly rough you can see a little bit better here and half of them are randomly unaffected okay and that's the uh, if that's the benefit of random you can add some random roughness throughout the hair which is really useful if you want to add a little bit more variation uh, to your hair grooms um, and that's how random and uniform work now the last thing I want to point out, and I'm going to use uniform for this, is um, how a feature called endpoint and shape work. Um, endpoint and shape kind of don't make a lot of sense. Okay, uh, if I were to use endpoint, I'm basically pushing the randomness to the endpoint of the hair, and with shape I can control um, where along the hair um, the roughness will be so this is at the tip and this is at the roots but it also distorts the hair considerably so I don't really have much use for this that's why I left this for last and I, and I feel like um, 
I'm not sure how you would use this setting, so but it's there if you if you'd like to use it. You know, can maybe you can have a little bit more variation or volume or something. But personally, I don't really use this setting at all. And finally, we have to come back to our curve, just like in the previous video where we discussed clumping. Uh, we could use a clump curve. Over here, we can use a roughness curve. Now, with the roughness curve, I'm um, I will so we've already got some settings here let's just uh, re reset all this okay with the roughness curve we can control how the roughness is affected from the root to the tip based on this um, from this side is the root and the other side is the tip okay so if I were to increase the roughness slightly and dramatically reduce the um, size maybe even even lower okay so it's really really rough here okay and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this down and you can see here that the roughness is much more you uh, it's it's evenly uh, or it's linearly changing you know, increasing from the root to the tip so the tip is the roughest and the the root is barely rough at all I could do it the other way as well I could bring that up again and bring this down and basically the root is very tip uh, very rough and the tips are very uh, relatively smooth now you can obviously this is a linear effect we can we can add a point and change it dramatically like this so we can have a much more exponential change um, or we can alter the change like this so it's varying throughout the hair so there's a lot of things we can do with this um, so if you if you have any need for extreme fine control of the roughness this would be your way to do it um, and if you ever get lost you can always click on this little arrow and reset the curve and it'll just reset this way okay and um, and the way you control this is by increasing the roughness value here okay so you can increase the amplitude and changing the size over here okay sorry about that changing the size here and that'll allow you to um, uh, uh, control the size and amplitude and the shape can be controlled by the curve great and that's all there is to know about the roughness setting. Um, I hope this helps you and I'll catch you in the next one.